that's why I love herbalism as well because it's not simply a matter of take this plant stimulate that receptor it's a whole connective process where you're working with nature if you're making your medicines you infusion it with love and intention and that's super important as well life is so hard it is so hard but at the same time it can be exquisite it can be so beautiful and magical we can love and feel all these amazing things but if we do not learn how to heal we don't get to experience those things as much hello welcome back to the podcast today i've got an amazing guest called rebecca laz who is joining us to educate us on the power of plants and the healing properties certain plants offer she is a medicinal plant expert scientist and educator and a holistic therapist and she's on a powerful mission to help us understand more about the intelligence and the real healing power that certain plants do offer so we dive into all that today and it really is a very important podcast i feel um there's lots of people like Laz doing this amazing work and it's really bridging the gap between science and I guess what humans have known all along but has got quite murky at present in the whole world of healing and holistic therapies and uh, yeah bridging that gap and really affirming certain things about plants and what plants can be really useful to our growth and expansion as humans so Laz was amazing today uh, on the podcast um, really appreciated for coming on and hopefully she'll come back in the future to spread some more wisdom and knowledge she's on a she's on a big journey to yeah, educate more people one thing that's really important to mention about Laz's work is that she is uh coming from such a centered place and uh, an interconnected uh very passionate grounded sense of herself and what the bigger picture is within all her work and why she does the thing she does so a great guest for the podcast really centered in that what makes us human so i hope you enjoy the show and, uh, please let us know in the comments how it was for you send it to anyone who you feel is relevant who might benefit from the podcast it really helps us grow and also subscribe as i mentioned before really will take less than a second and helps me out appreciate it enjoy the show since doing a little bit of research and obviously diving into your website uh yeah it sparks all sort of um questions mainly <laughs> but but also genuine you know um genuine feelings of uh of, of positivity and like i see through through obviously the lens of um the website and the work and the research that you're doing and the interesting topics that you're passionate about and the kind of story which we'll talk about the story this timeline of how it's come to be um it just feels very grounded and that's the kind of essence of it where it's always where the things coming from is 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 mainly uh the the, the most important where something is coming from um mm. i feel um so it feels like your work is coming from a real nice place but actually which I want to chat about more so Thank yeah but perhaps um give us an introduction of like yeah maybe I'd love to know the story of how you got into this kind of work and and the, the biomedicine and, and and yeah and your degree and etc um so it's a really funny story actually it's not scientific at all um <laughs> but actually when I was 16 I wanted to be a music journalist and you know we we're going to pick our A-levels and stuff like that and I had a dream uh, and usually you forget your dreams, but I woke up the next day and I just couldn't shake this name, Prince Xavier, spelled X-A-V-I-E-R, not like S-A-V-I-O-U-R, because that would be it's like quite poncy <laughs> to be like, I dreamt I was a saviour. It's not that at all. It was basically, I dreamt of this name and um, I got to the evening and I just couldn't shake this name. So I sat down and I Googled it on the desktop and I was scrolling and I found this guy in India called Prince Saviour who had set up camps for thousands of people 
um, merging biotechnology with mm -hmm. traditional medicines. And this light just flooded through me, like completely over my being, like this is going to be what I'm going to do with my life. So thankfully it happened just before A-levels and I chose to do, I wanted to go down the scientific route, always wanted to bridge the gap between traditional knowledge and modern science. Um, Cause I think the unity there could give so much healing. Um, and then a couple of weeks later, I had a dream about another name and I Googled it again and it came up with all this propaganda against herbal medicine saying it's all nonsense. Um, there's quackery, they're dangerous. They say they can cure cancer, stupid hippies, blah, blah, blah. But I knew I, I could feel that was just a warning. Um, gosh, gosh, I've found that to be true, that there's a lot against herbal medicines. Um, but yeah, that's how the journey started. And then I chose to do biomedicine, human biology, at uni, I wanted to get a scientific understanding of the body. Uh, whilst I was at uni, I trained in massage therapy, Swedish massage. Um, and I also, after uni, I did my diploma in hypnotherapy because there is no health without the mind. And, um, you know, I went traveling, did all of that. And it was really funny when we were in the hostels, whenever I'd go to the shops, I would get like the herbs. And when we were in the hostels and people, you know, chilling or by the pool or whatever I'd be there like trying to find the signal so I could look up on the scientific databases what these plants do <laughs> um, obviously I had my fun as well but then I did my master's in medicinal natural products and phytochemistry which was incredible one of the most awe-inspiring years of my life it was at the school of pharmacy at UCL and um learned how to put the plants in the labs um, find the active compounds, learn about indigenous medicines, quality control, pharmacognosy, how it works in the body, ethnopharmacology, that beautiful science where scientists meet indigenous people and understand their knowledge. Um, and yeah, then after that, I was an editor for a science journal, the Journal of Herbal Medicine, where it was basically my job to read the latest research, edit it and say this can be published or it can't be. Uh, quite missed that job actually <laughs> um, and yeah now I am a researcher at Kew Gardens researching ancient Greek medicines I'm co-editor for an educational charity Herbal Reality which is a wonderful go-to resource for all things herbal education whether you're a practitioner a patient member of the public or business because um, I know you know how much noise there is online about plant medicines so mm -hmm. There's that, and then of course there's my business as the plant scientist, which I've created to bring herbal medicines to the people and herbal knowledge so they can empower their, themselves through na nature-based medicines. Wow, lots going on there. You've been busy. A bit, bit too much, I must admit, but yeah, I've been busy. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's full on. I mean, we could dive into any of those topics and talk about that for the next hour. So it's like, hmm what do I want to dive into most it's <laughs> the dream side of things so initially I, there's so much power in dreams right mm. um you know the work that I've, I've learned about and like the collective unconscious and dreams hold so much wisdom it truly is the unconscious and like yes we can pathologize it or really try and understand or get to the root of things which we never will we just never will ex things just cannot be explained and that's just you know what we have to sometimes be at peace with but the fact that your dreams led you to something so profound that sparked something within you is just so incredible um yeah. I feel so blessed I feel so blessed um you know so many of my friends just don't know what they want to do with their lives Mm -hmm. And I've never, ever had that problem. <laughs> and so it's like on one half, yeah, I'm throwing myself into everything. I'm doing everything I can and it can be really tiring. It's sure. tough, um, you know, and being passionate about stuff. It's, it's, you, it's fire and that fire needs to be maintained. But on the other hand, you know, some people don't know what they want to do. So it's, yeah, I feel very blessed because also following that path has given me I've watched my dreams come true over and over again. It's not just that I'm helping people with plant medicines. It's the joys it's actually given me and the potentials, the research I can do where I will be able to travel to native people and understand the way they connect with nature 
or the fact that I'm sat in my apothecary now and I'm able to employ my mum and she's doing a really nice job of blending teas and stuff like that you know and I'm able to sit and study and write um, and also speak to other scientists and all these things like the fundamental things that make me happy as a person and give me joy and give me fulfillment Mm. are there in abundance in my career and at the same time it's generating medicines which are really helping people you know I've had people message me saying I've been depressed for so long I was having panic attacks every day I'm not having panic attacks anymore I've got my power back anxiety I don't anxiety doesn't rule me anymore I rule my anxiety people saying to me that you know I know that love music and they weren't able to dance for months because they've they've were depressed and then they start taking these medicines and they message me saying Becca I'm dancing again you know I get chills speaking about it but it's just this beautiful ecology because I listen to that dream and because I'm in alignment I get served and hopefully <laughs> more people on the earth get served as well so yeah it's funny how life works out sometimes you can't always follow logic no that's beautiful and it fills me with just a powerful feeling of positivity when you when I hear about that story of yeah people coming to you and saying you've helped them essentially and uh live a live a more meaningful life yeah let's dive into that then so so I know all your work is is it's kind of bridging this gap between medicinal plants science and then healing as a part of all that um what what really differentiates like medicinal plants to non-medicinal maybe we could start there and then of course we can go off into all these stories and 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 what what plants are are healing people yeah that's such a good question um it's actually often debated between scientists and herbalists because sometimes food is medicine and medicine is food um but what differentiates plants making it so if something has a there's foods which are nutritious you know they've got your vitamins and minerals and polyphenols and those sorts of things and there's foods which are pharmacologically active and will actually have a specific effect on a specific part of your body um also it's the doses and extraction methods which you take it in so for example sage you can put it in your roast but if you make a sage tincture and you have x amount of milliliters of it every week that starts to have an effect on your brain which increases the neurotransmission between your cells increases your memory all those sorts of things so it's yeah it's to do with the 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 active compounds in it the doses you take the formats you take it in and um yeah another thing that makes plants medicinal is these things called secondary metabolites So you've got your primary metabolites, which are the chemicals that the plant makes for basic needs, so reproduction um, and growth and those sorts of things. And then you've got your secondary metabolites, and they are for killing diseases, bacteria, viruses, basically give the plants its superpowers. Those secondary metabolites are what are medicinal for us. It makes sense. You know, if something's antimicrobial uh, for a plant, it'll be antimicrobial for us. And it's really interesting because there's a, um, you know, organic plants or plants that are grown in the wild, plants that have had to fight on their own have far more secondary metabolites than plants which have had all the herbicides and pesticides and basically been coddled and had Mm. everything done for it. It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it makes a hell of a lot of sense. So, for example, lavender, it actually grows better in you know, in these mountainous regions where there's not much nutrition in the soil because it has to make, it it doesn't, it not necessarily that it grows better, but it's more medicinal when we harvest it from there because it's had to make things to fight the sun, solar radiation off, to fight, to make more nutrition for itself because the the soil doesn't have much um, and it actually makes more potent medicine when it's grown in harsher conditions and I'm sure you'll agree that it's the same thing for humans you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> when we the hardier build... the stronger sometimes often the more wise have been through the most amount of uh yeah just just hard conditions yeah definitely um, if they can alchemize it if they alchemize it mm-hmm. the secondary metabolite is wisdom <laughs> there you go yeah you see it in uh and in, in herbs that grow in the wild like that you just cannot seem to match in your garden that rosemary that's just thriving uh 
you know, exposed on the coast where we live, just in this bush and it's everywhere. And then you're like, I'm trying to grow it in a pot and I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> it's yeah. just not growing. I'm giving it everything it needs. But you're right, it, it gets coddled. And it's just like a huge statement metaphor for yeah what we're doing to to most of the <clears throat> most of the plants that we are eating and consuming definitely and also as well a bit of a sidetrack but um as you can see my life is very busy and I got to the point where I was like do you know what I need to have a look at what's going on so I started to look at the the laws and principles of nature that make nature thrive um and apply it to my life and this whole thing of resilience um, increases strength and wisdom, but also diversity. Diversity is how nature thrives. The more diverse something is, mm -hmm. um, the healthier it is. Um, and it's sort of like with my career as well, sort of with healing, there's no one thing that's going to fix you. You need the diversity of different ingredients to help give you a healthy ecology um, and also good communication. Nature's communication between each other is phenomenal um and that's yeah. something that's really fundamental for human relationships as well uh which are an important part of well-being so yeah I like to think about that also the seasonal seasons and cyclical nature of things there's just so many things in nature where if we reflect on them and apply them to our lives it gives us a good framework so we can be well-beings and just surrender to the fact that there's structures in place that we can live with that will help us be well mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I've been um, reading, finally, The Biology of Belief by Bruce Lipton, and initially talks about the kind of Darwinian idea that we've really, really bought into to our detriment that perpetuates separateness of like, mm -hmm. it's all about the genes and the genes are predictions of our lives, essentially. And it's that individual kind of scope of, of the world um, or which really like impacts if our belief that is as our genetics are so important um then we will live in that way um mm -hmm. which is separate to everything else but what's more important as you know new science is really tapping into is the interconnectedness and the the shared environment and everything like the diversity which plays into that it's it's just so much more much more important definitely and also with genes as well you can have the genes, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they will express and that you'll see them. There's this quote, which I'm not going to quote. I can't remember the exact thing, but it's basically saying that genes are the piano and the environment is the fingers which play the song. Mm -hmm. Any song can be played, but you can have all these genes in you and they might not necessarily be expressed. It's just a certain environment will force these genes to come out. So these healthy environments will help our healthier genes to express. Obviously, there's some which we can't control, but... Um, yeah it just sort of seems like a uh like scientific destiny you know it's sort of like a analog of that um genes are just the be all and end all but it's not necessarily the case they're just a part of a complex picture much like everything in nature yeah exactly and uh, I think the analogy in the book was the, the, the genes will be the the key to the car the key to the car doesn't control the car it's the person in control of the key. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, okay, let's let's get back to kind of your work then. Um, and uh, yeah, plants within that. I mean, what do you say to people? Because this comes up a few, it's come up a few times for me uh, and it's kind of like the whole one side of this, one side of that, but the protective layer that plants build um, that can really... Um, yeah counteract how much nutrients you can get from it due to and, and i guess this depends on what plant and what um vegetable you might be consuming but let's just sticking to plants uh, how how can we really dive deeper into knowing like what plants are actually yeah bioavailable for us the mm. ones, ones that aren't this is a really good question and this is why yeah old school herbalism the herbalists who've been using this stuff for hundreds, if not thousands of years, know what percentage of alcohol to use, whether it needs to be a decoction, whether it needs to be a tea, whether it needs to be an overnight infusion, whether it should be a hydrosol. All of these things have been 
figured out by herbalists and mm. it's so funny because we try and charge forward with our science when really the herbalists are just like guys come on <laughs> yeah we've, we've sorted this out in fact there's a really interesting case of this plant called kava have you heard of it kava no it, oh it's it's wonderful you're um yeah because I know you're you are interested in cannabis and psychedelics and uh-huh. kava is this plant with a psychoactive offen- uh, effect uh, it's used in the Polynesian islands I believe and okay. they use it in ceremony um and it's supposed to really relax you make people feel good it's really beautiful and um yeah it can be helpful for sleep as well and we found it and you know got obsessed with certain active compounds in it so started basically the traditional extraction method is with water or maceration where you um chew it up and then you know you drink that but that's again essentially that's water we became obsessed with trying to get this one active compound out because that's how our western scientific mind works it's mm-hmm. the one active compound that's going to save the day mm. well and yeah so, we put it in supplements right and sell it at, at mass and it's so different exactly exactly and so we started extracting it with um, alcohol and all these different things and not respecting the traditional out, uh, extraction methods and then eventually what happened is it started to give people liver damage and they realized that well, well firstly they put a blanket ban on it you're not allowed on it here you're not allowed it over here anymore even though it's safe if you use the traditional extraction method because we did it wrong we, we don't use it anymore and then basically what happened is is because they were used in weren't using water what it was doing was taking out this really essential antioxidant called glutathione mm-hmm. one of the strongest antioxidants in the liver which can protect us from um damage and while when they were um extracting it in the new method it was getting rid of the glutathione so it was then going in and damaging the liver whereas if they respected the traditional extraction methods it would have been fine and we would have had more alternatives to alcohol or you know or even just sitting in ceremony together or something to help you sleep so yeah it's history is important herbalists know what they're doing mm, and a lot of the time they might not know why they know but it's like been passed down for so many years and it's just like an intuitive sense perhaps do you, it is, do you but find it's also that very scientific uh-huh. like there's a miss there's a miss uh um there's a myth that herbalism isn't not scientific it really is they look at the active compounds mm-hmm. not all herbalism like there's there's herbalism is vast and wide you've got everything from witches to scientists in it because it's all about nature you know yeah yeah it's a spectrum right definitely but when you're I've I teach at the Tonica School of Herbal Medicine and um I've seen at other universities that teach herbalism as well it's very much you need to learn the chemistry of the plant to know which um solvent it would actually be best in so it's it's traditional knowledge has been validated by science it's not just intuitive Mm-hmm. but also sometimes it comes down to the basics of like roots and barks which it's the active compounds are locked in there you can't just leave it in a cup of hot water you need to boil it up give it a lot of heat give it a lot of energy in order to be able to extract mm-hmm. these things and you know i'm sure you've seen with the medicinal mushroom craze it's booming now which is great because it's uh medicinal mushrooms is powerful stuff but they need a specific extraction method and you go to you know, a general shop and it will just have a ground up piece of chaga and people put it in their porridge thinking oh this is good for me but nothing it's not doing anything for them because it hasn't gone through an extraction method and so none of the active compounds are bioavailable um but people mm-hmm. getting into business don't know this um people oftentimes people getting into business just want a huge markup so they'll just buy it sell it on and that's it um but a lot of people getting into the business as well are well-meaning, just not well-educated on mm-hmm. it. So, yeah, careful where you buy from. Yeah, we'll get into the quality control and, and stuff. Where would someone start then with, with, with all this stuff? Is it about really looking to, you know, some resources perhaps that you can uh, mention and we can put in the descriptions and stuff at the pop for the podcast? But what, well, where would, because people listen to this, they're like, right, I'm so interested in this. This is really like changing perhaps my perspective on a few things. Where where do do I begin with understanding more about how to 
get certain benefits health benefits from say mushrooms yeah well it's a really good question and this is part of the reason why herbal reality the education um charity was set up is because there's so much noise online and it's either companies trying to sell you their products or these websites which are like herbs are really dangerous don't go near them <laughs> like wikipedia mm -hmm. <laughs> um so what i would say is firstly check out herbal reality there's a lot of really good grounded articles on there um there's also a short course at botanica school of herbal medicines where it's a couple weeks or even there's one which is over the weekend teaches you home herbalism what to use for your common colds or you know if you've got period pains or whatever and it'll teach you how to um, prepare the plants um and there's also a list of books which i will send to you after which you can basically just look at the plant it'll tell you exactly what it does or look up an illness and it'll tell you what plants are good for it um but yeah it's yeah good good herbal books you can't go wrong with those as well mm -hmm. yeah nice so what plants have you seen the most benefits from in that you i know you've got some on your store that you've you know um made into tinctures and teas and stuff what what any any that you would just you know put your flag up for like this is this is what i would uh yeah. I, I would promote over and above anything else like what have you seen the most Ooh. effect? okay that's a really good question it's a hard one because obviously different like for me course, now, the yeah are... but maybe for for um low mood anxiety perhaps or 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 low mood's an interesting one because it's it, it, there's so many nuances to it but yeah someone that's um wants to just just ground themselves maybe the anxiety yeah. let's go there first well there's a couple i'd like to speak about um but they're both kind they're both a type of plant which are called adaptogens mm -hmm. now let me um contextualize this in in western science pharmaceutical science they basically have one or a couple of active compounds which do all the work um and the difference with herbalism is that there's hundreds if not thousands of compounds in a plant extract which work on a myriad of different plant parts of your body and there's this plant um category called adaptogens mm -hmm. and what they do is they will adapt specifically to you to help your body your nervous system your hormones to balance so if you're really fatigued all the time they can lift your energy up or if i'm really hyper and um manic they can help calm me down and different ones of these plants have got their own little superpowers but ashwagandha you may have heard of is super super popular now mm -hmm. and that's an adaptogen that's specifically good for um stress anxiety sleep but because it's got hundreds, if not thousands of molecules, it's actually really good for um, helping balance testosterone levels and it can help a bit with immunity as well. And it's kind of difficult explaining this to some people sometimes because we're used to one drug does one thing, whereas with plants, because it works on so many different parts of the body, it can actually do multiple things. Now, the way that ashwagandha works is our nervous system is what's responsible for our movement but also our thoughts memories and emotions the central mm -hmm. nervous system is the brain and the spine and when it fires too much when it's, it's basically works by fire and electricity when it fires too much you get very anxious very jittery can't sleep um and there's this inbuilt mechanism this inbuilt receptor called GABA receptors when GABA receptors are stimulated the electricity firing slows right down and we feel nice and calm, chilled out. Alcohol, for example, stimulates GABA receptors, which is why if too much is stimulated, we lose control of our movement and we become, we you know, get clumsy because our nervous system is in control of our movement as well. Now, ashwagandha stimulates these GABA receptors and it also, so it calms us and chills us out. It helps with sleep latency, which is basically the period of time that it takes you to um, fall asleep. I can't remember the exact statistic, but it was something like, um, oh, sorry, I can't actually remember the statistic, exact statistic, but a significant proportion of people in this study were falling asleep a lot faster. As you know, sleep is imperative for mental health. Mm -hmm. Another thing that it really is good at is when we're stressed we release this hormone called cortisol 
and makes you forget everything. It's the reason why you can study, study, study for an exam, know exactly, you know, everything. You get in there, mind gone blank, you can't remember anything. It's because you get a flush of cortisol because you're stressed. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that if you've had chronic periods of stress that you just can't remember anything. Uh, ashwagandha has been shown to reduce that by uh, over 30 percent so it's really beautiful potent stuff um and yeah it's like I put it in my formulations for memory just because okay yeah rosemary sage help with the enzymes that create new memories and stuff like that and that's great but if you're not getting to the root of the problem which is your stress levels sure. you're always going to be you know battling uphill so that's one adaptogen, which I absolutely love. That's one of the ones where people have literally messaged me saying I used to have panic attacks every day and I'm not mm. anymore. It's really good stuff. Um, and then the other one that I love is rhodiola. Rhodiola rosea, Arctic root. It's from Siberia. And the Russians actually used to give it to their cosmonauts when they sent them to space to help them deal with the emotional, physical and mental struggles of being up there builds our resilience up massively it's been shown in the workplace to increase productivity increase um, concentration all these sorts of things it increases our vo2 max and which is basically um you know in exercise it increases people's capacity capacity for exercise it's been given to olympians and all sorts and it also increases our serotonin levels because it's full of this molecule called 5htp which you may have heard of yeah. this synthetics uh synthetic 5-htp is sold in the shops because mm -hmm. basically what it does is it's ingredient it's an ingredient that goes on to make serotonin or melatonin in the body it's a precursor um, melatonin is what helps us with sleep and serotonin is what makes us feel good makes us feel um sociable makes us feel happy 5-htp is the base ingredient for that and this plant is full of it so again like I've had people message me saying it's really helping my energy and then I've got a lot of people messaging me saying I'm sleeping deeper than ever this stuff has really sorted me out this is the one where people are messaging me saying I can dance again I'm not feeling depressed anymore mm. um and another thing that it does the reason why it can help us with our energy levels is because it basically oxygen there's this part of the cell called mitochondria this little factory in the cell which smushes together oxygen and glucose to make energy. Um, and rhodiola affects how we metabolize oxygen so we can actually create more energy. Um, and yeah, I just, I just think it's magic that these completely natural plants can have all these beautiful effects on our body and can increase our quality of life. So we don't have to wait till we're at crisis point before we go to the doctors and they say, here's some Prozac. You know, there's things we can do, tools we can have in our toolkit um for periods of time which is stressful and that's not to say there's anything wrong with Prozac if that's your medicine and crack on and mm -hmm. the best on your healing people need what they need but I just love these because you know rhodiola I don't take it every day but if I'm going through a period of, of time which is like if I've got a lot of work or you know something's happened in my personal life or whatever I have this tool in my toolkit that helps take the edges off and gives me my power back yeah and this has been happening since the dawn of time. Animals will go to certain leaves or, or you see, you know, dogs on a very simple level eating grass when they're not well. Exactly. And it's like there's something within that that's more intelligent than the dog. Um, but yeah, not to not to simplify anything to a dog <laughs> and eating no, grass. No, no. But I, yeah, it's it's this intelligence it. that we can tap into. Um and it's amazing to hear about in your education with this. If astronauts taken it, I know people, <laughs> I know people listening are like, yeah, sign me up. Astronauts are taking this to, to stay more uh, to stay more connected at that. Um, but it's a uh, it's fascinating. And I think now enters the conversation because I can just we are, you know, we are but more tools and and uh, intelligent monkeys. Um, so there's a part of us, it's like, oh, our kind of ears prick up when we hear certain things and we're like oh that sounds nice that sounds easy that sounds simple and there's a part of us primitively that wants a, a quick fix for something we are in that survivalist mode um sometimes but then enters the conversation okay how do i integrate after i've taken something which mm. is you know th that for me is a, a, a big conversation because you can 
go and take a, a medicinal plant in ceremony. Um, we can talk about cannabis and psychedelics. Um, but if we do that, it's like that's 10 percent of the of the healing yeah. that the healing comes from that integration after. So you might be mm -hmm. taking the tincture um, and then it's after it's like, right now that's, that's, that's grounded me. That's brought me back to a level. I actually think clearly. And then mm -hmm. now how do I, you know, how do I heal from the thing that's causing the, the issue? So uh, how, how do you navigate that ground with people um, when you, you know, you're, you're obviously s selling some of these, um, beautiful plants that you've uh yeah put into tinctures and stuff it's a brilliant question so the two things that i want to say i should have said this earlier as well when you mm -hmm. said about how do we start using herbs people need we need to normalize seeing herbalists they mm -hmm. really like they know their stuff and we've got this culture where it's like okay i don't want to take this pharmaceutical let me just pop that in instead when really what you need is a complete holistic map of what's going on in your life physically nutritionally emotionally mm -hmm. and different plants for each one and you can get a personalized formula and support throughout your healing journey so um so that's only, one so I just uh, the only way this is um sound sounding familiar for me is when i went to see an acupuncturist and then we went through like you know the session was an hour for her 40 minutes was all about what's going on with me Let's look at the map of you in your life and, and what's happening, circumstance, environment, everything, and then diet and everything else. And then we'll do some physical work. But yeah, it's like it it's so it needs to be so much more normalized because that's that is so much more more to it than just looking to something external for, for here. Exactly. It's holistic and we live in a, a our bodies are complex systems. And our environments are complex systems. And what I compare it to is say you go to somewhere and it's poverty all around and there's loads of crime going on and people are really ill and stuff like that. And you see one family and you give them 20 grand. OK, that's good for that family. But is it sorting out the systems that are in place to help lift the, you know, them long term into a better state? No. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, firing all of these molecules that are single receptor in our body isn't necessarily what's going to lift us into a better state overall um it's a complex thing and this is going back to what you're saying about integration it is i think about this often it is that it is that is it you're better off having a weaker ceremony and a stronger integration than a really strong ceremony and no integration after it's the ceremonies give you sight as to what could come into your life but you building the bridge to get there is up to you and that's what happens after and mm, that's a great analogy yeah thank you <laughs> um and you know we live in a culture that fast food culture where one thing's going to sort out everything and it's going to get there really quickly and it's just it's simply not the case and this yeah, is why it's heavily conditioned isn't it that buy this and it's going to be the answer yeah it's like definitely. it's like it's like the, the the central theme of so much in our culture which is you know all about economy and and, and buying and selling and it's like a, such a theme that we need to be aware of yeah exactly and this theme is you know it's a it's that it's the fundamental theme of capitalism and we can't escape it but and it's coming to our healing as well um but yeah, when it comes to integration, it is very much an this I describe it as ecological healing because there's many different facets, very many different nodes of us that need to be um, connected. So from a, a mental perspective, you need to be watching the language, you know, that you speak to yourself with. If you mess up, right, or you, you're doing something, say, for example, you binge eat, every time you binge eat, you go oh I'm so freaking stupid I'm so low blah 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 you will continue to do that because you've trapped yourself in a negative um language right so everything so much is to do with with language it's also the consistency of overriding our nervous system and the patterns we've had for our whole life like our nervous systems which what control our thoughts our memories and emotions are primed a certain way and they repeat it and so we need to be consistent with our behaviors in order for those neuronal pathways to be strengthened and we do that 
with language, repeated behavior, also things like breath work and regulating your nervous system can have all the herbs in the world. If you're not kind to yourself in your mind and if you're not regulating your nervous system, um, you, there's only so far you're gonna get. Mm-hmm. Um, nature, we fundamentally need time in nature. We are ill because of it. Nature deficit disorder is real. Sometimes you can think you're going absolutely nuts in life. You've done all the meditation, you've gone for the runs, all of that. And there's still this layer which you can't seem to shake off. But then you go to the woods and you feel like you're at home again. We're a part of that. Yeah, And I know earlier you said, oh, I don't mean to make it sound so small as a dog. No, we are. We are fundamentally a part of nature, much like the dog's are or the ants are or the clouds are and it's our instinct to be amongst the trees and so that is where a lot of our medicine lies and that's why I love herbalism as well because it's not simply a matter of take this plant stimulate that receptor it's a whole connective process where you're working with nature if you're making your medicines you're infusing it with love and intention and that's super important as well um also journaling I know everybody goes back to that but if you can't untangle the thoughts in your mind and you can't understand them then you will be not be able to move past them it's literally journaling is a mind massage so you can get the knots out and move a clear track forward and yeah different people need different things some people like routine some people like a morning ritual all these different things there's no that's the that's the beauty and the difficult part of it is there is not a one-size-fits-all policy um you know you need to figure out what works for you so for me mantras rubbish don't do anything for me um meditations where you do the sounds don't do anything for me visualizations do amazing for me though um singing you know in groups and stuff like that doesn't do it it's like it's nice but I can't relax into it going out dancing though that is my medicine sometimes for me medicine is going raving many times in fact because I need that joy to remember why life is worth it again Mm. and I know that might sound a bit dark but it's hard sometimes when Mm. everything's going on and it's chaos and it's chaos and it's chaos so yeah that's another thing that I think is really important as well is that it's very easy to become zoomed in you probably get this as well what part can I better myself today? How can I improve myself today? How can I grow? And it's like, sometimes you just need to go out and have a giggle and smell the flowers and Mm -hmm. things that give you joy, follow them. They're not a mistake. They're there to fill your heart up. Um, And the things that give you peace, like I in my bones recently, I know that I need to paint. I haven't painted in years, but I can feel that I need to paint. And I sat down and I painted and it just took this layer off that no run or meditation could have given me so things give you peace and joy do them prioritize them like your life depends on it because they do it does beautifully put that's phenomenal it's amazing to hear someone who's done so much work in um you know in in plant medicines and, and, and and education around it and is doing lots within that but speak to life in this way like they're the people I want to spend time with because they're the people who are connected to the whole and not just sat in a room trying to figure out a problem, you know, mm. and, and, and got this very like, you know, I don't know, I don't know what the, the, the right, the right statement would be there. But, but what you've just said is, is such an amazing insight into how you live your life and what's important to you and why you're doing the work you're doing. Because it's always why. It's always mm. why you do something. It's not. It's it's not how you. It's it's how you do something, but not generally what you're doing. It's why you're doing it. Yeah. Mm. So it's. Thank you. No, it's, yeah. it's it's really important. It's really important. Like I, I went for, and a a beautiful five hour hike the other day, mm. and I needed it, and I, I hadn't done that in years, and I needed to. There was this calling to do something just on my own that was challenging and just to go off you know if I found a path I'd go in the other direction I was just very adamant that today I'm going to challenge myself physically Mm -hmm. which ends up being emotionally and then spiritually as well and I just looked to the highest point 
and just headed there with with no you know there was parts that i didn't know you open that gate and you think okay i'm going to be coming back through this gate in a few hours but am i like who who knows what's ahead i don't know and there was parts of the of the journey where i was just like um i could yeah <laughs> who knows i i just i it was challenging i just couldn't mm -hmm. i i couldn't get through it but i did and it was it was physically it was physically exhausting um but coming back the elation that i felt doing that very simple primal you know adventure whatever you want to call it like it was just incredibly healing for me in that moment mm -hmm. and again taking away that layer from whatever it was that was preventing me from getting to uh in touch with with myself or or something that yeah something that um is the next chapter to my life perhaps mm. you know so it's, so yeah it's um yeah that's really beautiful it's it's really important to show ourselves that we can do hard things as well and to create situations of safe adversity so that when actual problems come in life we're primed and we're strong and we're ready to do it when i exercise i like the way that it makes me feel in my mind that i am powerful you know even though I'm not that physically strong or anything like that the fact my mind can push me to do that makes me feel invincible at times you know when I bother to exercise <laughs> mm -hmm. um but another thing as well is going back to it you know the fundamental question that I ask is what the hell is a human and how do we get the most out of life right because we are a very odd species um life healing is so so important because life is so hard it is so hard but at the same time it can be exquisite it can be so beautiful and magical we can love and feel all these amazing things but if we do not learn how to heal we don't get to experience those things as much you know and we suffer over and over again healing is a fundamental skill in life that we all need i was speaking to my friend the other day he um did a magic mushroom ceremony uh well it was just him actually he worked with a shaman it was psilocybin and um he said he was there in the ceremony like he'd been blindfolded and stuff and he was uh he said he basically reached nirvana and he saw it and it was people laughing and dancing and you know all of these things and I just thought and he was like and it was heaven and I just thought people laughing and dancing we do that here mm -hmm. we do that here and it's just sent me like this. I've been thinking about it a lot recently. Heaven is here on earth. We just need to make space for it. And we need to prioritize those things that make us feel so blissful and happy and enjoy. But hell is here too. And so we need to have the strength to be able to navigate these situations because it can be very heavy sometimes. And, you know, going out for a dance with your mates, plant medicines, going for that hike, that is how we build ourselves up so that we can experience as much heaven here as possible and be able to navigate hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we live in that contrast, don't we? It's entirely possible to live in, in any which way, but it's, it's, it's within us all. It's like the energy systems that, that exist within us the the potential to do so much good and beauty and then the potential to do so much evil and and harm and it's yeah alchemizing which one do you want to nurture you know which wolf do you want to feed it's that it's that it's within us all and uh the power of both are equally opposite you know there's mm. i have this conversation lo lots of people like where where does evil come from? Because the, the collective unconscious, if you can be born with with, with um, certain things, you know, I, I feel it's entirely possible for people to be born with a inherent racism as a part of their, you know, experience in the womb. I was talking about this with, yeah, last night with, with some people. And it's, it's, it's entirely possible that that is the, the, the collective unconscious like manifesting. And because my partner's just been at a, uh, a conscious living festival in Bristol called Yes And, and then, you know, invited people from indigenous tribes to come speak. And it's, it's just profound that the healing that has to take place to really 
reshape these unconscious beliefs and this unconscious uh yeah perhaps disposition to be not love and not not good because it's mm -hmm. it's been up such a part of our history mm -hmm. um so yeah it's it, it's really tapping into these energies and they're within us all so which one do we want to do do we want to you know bring forth and, and and take into the future yeah definitely i think as well it's um it, what i love with with nature and nature-based healing is it's we are intrinsically connected to nature mm -hmm. when we lose this connection in the world that for me is where evil comes from when you can't uh comprehend the effects that something is having on another being or person or living system and so when you do live with love for nature um and you actively thank it um and live with reverence for it and respect that if you can respect a flower and and thank a flower that energy will carry with you through the rest of your relationships and it helps keep your heart open it's very very easy the easiest thing in fact when we're hurt is to close our heart off harden it and then that is where the devil's work comes out to be honest that's what I think is when we harden our hearts and we lose our connection so yeah it's just another wonderful facet of herbalism mm -hmm. that yeah comes forward for me Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you mentioned um uh plant ceremony and what what research are you aware of that's that's going on because i i tell you a bit about my journey to acknowledge the power of you know the real mystical uh psychedelic power of certain plants and doing them with such intention um and then you know going off on my own doing doing my own ceremonies um mainly with psilocybin not in this country of course um but yeah do, do my own ceremonies and, and i always felt so much benefit real deep introspection um of doing it on my own mm. um i haven't uh haven't taken ayahuasca it's something that's spoke to me for sure i've never thought i want to seek it it's mm. never been something that because you know, it's obviously it's gained you know even touching on mainstream like it, it's it's rare that i meet people that, that haven't heard of it um which which says a lot so it's yeah it's it's, it's doing a lot in uh, so many different places in the world um but i i must have heard about it perhaps it was joe rogan maybe six seven years ago um you know podcasts were coming out and i was getting new information uh from people that had just no agenda and it was just mm. an amazing I'd get amazing doses of, of just uh, yeah knowledge and just interesting um, yeah interesting information about certain things. So it's about six years ago when I was traveling, and it's kind of been always on the radar. I've not got around to doing it yet, uh, but I know many people that have. Um, and yeah, it's a it's a really interesting one, and maybe we could just touch up on it slightly. Mm -hmm. um what what in terms of the the research that's going on maybe in terms of psychedelic research like I've, probably around the same time i was uh getting wind of like tim ferris's work that he does um with investing in maps the multi-disciplinary Asso association of psychedelic drugs in america um their groundbreaking work and phase three trials of mdma psychoassistic therapy um and all of that stuff that's coming out which is just groundbreaking um work that that veterans and people that suffer with post-traumatic stress um which sheds just a different light than the story we've been told about drugs in mm. you know in, in in air quotes because it's not drugs drugs is like saying food it's just a, a catch-all term for so many different things mm. um so yeah i've I was so interested in that side of of things but in terms of like the research what are you noticing are you noticing that there's like a different energy around this now people are talking about it more or um... well it's a it's a really interesting one because it's going back to well so pharmaceutical science works by reducing everything down into its tiny parts patenting it and that mm -hmm. sort of thing 
Um, and psychedelics research, it, whilst I'm so grateful that pharmaceutical companies are looking at this stuff because there's no way that this stuff could be normalised without the billions of pounds of investments and scientists talking about it all, the world, all around the world and doctors listening to them and stuff like that. I don't necessarily agree with the drive to find the one active compound that's going to that like they can patent to, yeah. to make this money or whatever I do but I do have deep deep reverence and respect for psychedelic medicines the way they've been done traditionally mm-hmm. um and the results speak for themselves you know with reductionist science we've broken down depression and said to people that's that receptor in your brain you've not got enough serotonin that's what's going wrong when really it's a whole myriad of structures in your life and things going wrong in your body um, that cause you to perpetually feel this way. And with psychedelics, you know, the problem with antidepressants is people can be on them for 30 years, never find happiness. And every time they go to the doctor and Mm. say, this isn't working for me, they'll up the dose. And this isn't to say that I don't have respect for pharmaceutical medicines, I do, Um, but, it's not the system like that. It doesn't always necessarily work. I've spoken to countless people who have said, actually, my antidepressants made me worse because they made me numb to the fact that I was in an abusive relationship and that I needed to get rid of that. Mm. Or they actually made me a zombie. And, yeah, I didn't feel pain, but I didn't feel joy either. Um, some people, you know, I must speak to my friend the other day and she was like, I'm on antidepressants. I'm so happy. I feel amazing. I literally my life was sorted out and I was happy for her. It's great. With psychedelic medicines, what the results we're seeing is people who are chronically depressed, had depression for decades, tried every therapy under the sun, treatment resistant is what they're called, um, mm-hmm. who are having psychedelics. And in one session, they are their depression is lifted. And what's remarkable about it is six months later, when you speak to them, they haven't gone back into remission. They're still well. Now, this isn't the case for every single person that takes it. As you know, there's a massive integration process that needs to take place. But time and time again, we are seeing that people are being lifted from the throes of addiction, PTSD, depression, eating disorders, all these different things. And I think the reason why is because this is what somebody described it as. They said, for the first time, I was able, able to actually step out and look at my problems rather than just be consumed in them. And they were able to get some objective view, which gave them their power back. Mm. It brings harmony to the heart. And that is what is needed. It re-enchants people with the world. The world is amazing. The world is actually incredible. But we're so zoomed in on our lives and Mm. our problems and our inboxes and stuff like that, that we lose reverence for everything that is around us. And psychedelics Mm. burst your heart open in order to be able to to love that again and to be grateful for life and to realize that we're the healing that we have within us um and so yeah people you know they're saying that psychedelics could do for psychiatry what antibiotics did for medicine revolutionary revolutionary and i also am really grateful they're coming as well because as you will know there's loads of men who don't want to see a therapist it, you know they're still find that emasculating they haven't actually got the tools to be able to communicate their problems they haven't got the language for it nor the the emotional makeup to be able to open up like that Mm. they just don't because they've had decades of being told not to do that it's re-triggering it's re-stressing like the situation to talk about your emotions is is even more stressful than not you know yeah exactly or that. it would be like someone giving me a bow and arrow and being like right go shoot that tree up there I wouldn't know what to do I've never picked one up before mm. like there's literal lack of knowledge and and practice in it where psychedelics can help blokes who won't have other avenues they might not even necessarily respect other avenues because they want to be the alpha male they bloody need those mushrooms <laughs> you know mm-hmm. so I'm grateful that they're there I think they're going to help a hell of a lot of people and it's not a cure-all that's going to fix everyone there is going to be a lot of people that rely on mushrooms just to make them feel whole again without doing the work when they're sober again 
you know, that's a part of it. There are some people who shouldn't touch them because, you know, if, if you've got schizophrenia or stuff like that, not great. And uh, the reason I'm just putting all this in there is because it's so easy to have uh, rose tinted glasses on and be like, oh, it's going to save the world. Like, no, it will help a lot of it, but let's stay objective here. Mm-hmm. Um, but for so many people, whether it bring it can either bring them healing or the best time of their life either is very important Mm -hmm. yeah i heard um that psychedelics are for everybody but everybody is not for psychedelics you know and the the age-old set set in setting is really important too Um, yeah i think as well it's really important that not to just replace okay i'm not having that drug let me chuck a mushroom in there no you need to create the container in order to have it regulate your nervous system before Mm -hmm. go with intention know exactly what you want and what you want to get out of it Mm -hmm. don't just sort of do it and hope for the best you know you need to put structures in place to in order for you to get the most out of it it's not going to fix your life for you but it will show you that you can do it for yourself Mm -hmm. I think what you're speaking to about the identity that what psychedelics can do it can really separate you from i guess the we call it the ego but it's the it's the self it's the self that you believe you are so it's that identity that you can separate yourself from and say oh i'm not that i'm so much greater and you know whether it's chemicals in the brain or something beyond that the mystery around it is also encapsulating because you're like wow there's so much more than i even you know thought or even have experienced before um, and, that, and that's for profound for some people but I even think just the space that it creates like remove the 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 drug the psychedelic whatever you want to call it but the space mm-hmm. that you're in when you are in ceremony maybe it's around a fire on the north coast at a men's workshop maybe it's going over to Peru but the intention that surrounds that and the you know the conversations that surround mm-hmm. that and everything all of that you know fluff around the 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 central thing if you took that center thing out of it it would still be an incredible space for healing Mm. Um, and and the we talked about it on on emma's podcast this like this physical um letting go and and release um when in ceremony that you you know you can just use that opportunity to just physically move in a way that your head's not involved and you're led Mm. by that you're led by your heart yeah so important and Mm -hmm. another thing to be honest I haven't sat in ceremony with other people with psychedelics um but I have taken them in nature and I felt the soberest I've ever felt because what was true was utterly clear Uh, standing amongst the trees I I can't tell you like I've never felt a sobriety like it because it was very clear the nature of how things actually are Mm. and I fell completely in love so yeah it was good (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah amazing Um, I do want to touch on before we wrap it up the quality control and how we as consumers can really Mm. identify you know reputable brands or uh, you know maybe it's a chance for you to plug your products <laughs> but like <laughs> h- how we can really and even for I get perhaps for even for people interested in and in going into the market themselves you know creating products and and, and where to source things ethically sustainably uh, and all of that I guess that you, you I think I saw somewhere you were writing an ebook on a kind of control, quality control oh yeah i wrote um i wrote an ebook with my friend who's doing this phd in plant quality mm-hmm. control but um yeah it's something i've worked on for a while and it's if, the industry I is feel. a mess the yeah. it is a real mess um to the point where they did a study of uh 30, ginkgo biloba is a plant which increases blood flow to the brain they're researching it from for all sorts from Alzheimer's to Parkinson's and it's got yeah loads of wonderful effects and they did a study of it of 35 um ginkgo products all off the shelf in the UK so I'm talking the big high street shops and only six of them had any of the plant in only two of them were actually up to pharmacopoeal medicinal standards 
and you know some of them some companies put dye in their products so they will pass the lab tests there was even a case <laughs> so bad Kew Gardens they were doing um lab tests on certain medicinal plants and one of the things you can do is test for the levels of active compounds and they tested this plant and they were like right yep yeah, that we know it's that it's got the active compounds in and it's only because a person came in who was a specialist in Chinese uh, botany mm -hmm. that came in looked at the plant and said it's definitely not that well they realized what this company had done is they'd gone to the lengths of getting a false plant dipping it in another tincture of the actual plant so they could send it to the lab and it would still pass um herbal medicines much like illicit drugs where they put take stuff out and put other stuff in in order to weigh down the bag essentially is what is what happens and when you have supply chains with 60 people in them and you mm. can't track where it's actually come from you don't know who's taken a bit out and putting something else in they found that li they've literally found actual like mdma in um weight loss tablets before <laughs> like it's crazy um wow. and, i don't think i wanted to know all this <laughs> yeah it's a mess it's a mess and this is why like it really it upsets me because you've got well-meaning people wanting to help do natural health care they're taking something's actually doing worse for them or also they're taking it it's not doing anything and they think oh god well i knew herbal medicines were nonsense um so it really sullies the whole industry and it's not that everybody's getting into the industry as some pirate there are pirates in there you know it's making so much money right now um but it's oftentimes just a lack of education so there's fundamental things that i would look for they have to be able to tell you where the plant has come from if they can't tell you where the plant has come from red flag because uh, you don't know where it's been Things that are really good are things like fair wild, um, organic can show good quality control. Um, and also if you look at the packet and it's full of loads of thinners and bulking agents and chalk and stuff like that, it's really one of the things I've struggled with the most is actually getting the right dose of the plant into a dose that the public will actually take. Because, you know, in Chinese medicine, sometimes they're using kilos of plants and so if you've got a pill that's that big and there's 20 ingredients in there and only one of them is a plant, it doesn't make sense to me that you can actually get an active dose of a plant in there. Um, and so, yeah, those are just a few pointers. Um, my products as well are, um, well, I've got the ones, I've got the ashwagandha, I've got the rhodiola, I've got the for lymph your lymph health i've got um hay fever kit coming out i've got mushrooms coming out but what i'm formulating next is i'm basically zooming in on things like burnout anxiety depression um you know joint health all of these different things I've got loads of things coming out in the mix but they're basically products to help people enhance their quality of life so they can handle their day-to-day -day better instead of waiting until we get to a crisis point and yeah I'm just really bloody excited to get them out to be honest and um, yeah quality control is a minefield but yeah don't be shy to ask questions to who you're buying from and careful of Amazon and stuff because people can sell anything online they really really can in those places you can put anything in a, in a bottle and just charge for it so mm -hmm. yeah Absolutely. Um, any brands that you'd recommend to pe for people? Uh, yeah, so obviously mine. <laughs> um, but then Paka do wonderful work as well. Okay. I really, really like them. Um, A Vogel have got some really good stuff. Um, Baldwin's have got some really good stuff. Uh, yeah. What Have you heard of Tree Harvest? They're no. quite big. Have you not? I'll send you their website. A very, like, 90s website. But... Um, the amount of stuff on there is is incredible. So maybe you could have a little quality control test on that. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've not chapped into foraging. I mean, of course you will be invited back on at some point because I just Thank think you. the wealth of knowledge and you've got lots of exciting things coming up as well. Um, but you. yeah, just quickly on foraging, is there anything, I mean, the time is now, right? The seasons are, are changing and uh, lots of things are coming into into bloom i guess is there anything in particular that is rife that you would recommend to people i mean i did 
well, I intended on doing local annuary. The thing, this thing, I don't think I was the first person to coin that, but I created the Instagram and I was like, right, I'm going to forage and I'm going to bring only UK produce in the month of January. After a couple of days, I was exhausted. Um, wasn't probably in the right mental place for it. So I just said, it's okay, I'll do it next year. So I'm going to plan ahead and I'm going to preserve and I'm going to, but it was so hard to get flavoring and without any prep and knowledge. <laughs> and it was, it, it just, but I know it's out there. And one thing it did do for me was allow me to tap into what we see in the supermarket is minor in comparison to how much there is available in nature mm. and what we can consume and what is good for us. But most people will go through their life thinking we are living in the most abundant time in the human history. Look at all this produce in one place, but it's a, what it allowed me to do is just realize, wow, no, this is the stuff that's easily, um, you know, easily manufactured, mass produced, etc. cetera. Um, mm. So it was quite an interesting lens into a new world of foraging, which me and my partner are like very passionate about and want to learn so much more about. Mm. Um, yeah, no, I totally, I'm, I'm with you. And I, I eating seasonally and eating what's grown locally is just another wonderful way to connect with nature. It's insane that I'm getting strawberries from Tanzania in December, but that's another conversation. Mm. It's just, yeah, it's one of these things where you unconsciously for years I didn't even notice. Yeah. And then recently I've just been like, this is actually not okay. Yeah. But um, no, I'm actually not very good at foraging. People assume that okay. I have. <laughs> have knowledge on it um but my training was in biomedicine and in phytochemistry so I sort of skipped the botany in the middle I went from the body to the chemicals uh -huh. um and it's actually since working at Kew Gardens that I've realized actually these are skills I really need to build up so mm. I'm studying I've done a few botany classes I'm studying botany um I've booked on a course I speak to my botany friends about it but I'm not the expert when it comes to these things mm. scientists really do not know everything so. yeah, really yeah. Well, there's a great shout there's... That from the rooftops honestly. <laughs> well that's good the, you're honest and that's that's the main thing um so it's there's a few Instagram accounts that I can send you away. Um, there's one foraged by Fern, who's like, yeah, that's what I have. If you follow it, phenomenal. I mean, it's, yeah, it's very aesthetically pleasing. Don't know how accessible that is for lots of us to make it look that good, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, great. Well, I'm glad we left that to last because there wasn't much to say. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. Okay, well, honestly, I appreciate your time so much and we tapped into to lots and uh the real yeah i see you and i see i see the work you're doing and it's uh it's appreciated so yeah great that yeah. we can connect and yeah. hopefully keep up the conversation yeah thank you it was a really really beautiful way to start today i appreciate you giving me the time and space so yeah speak to you again soon yeah amazing did you want to point to people anywhere or anything you've got um oh um here? so my website is laz the plant scientist laz um that's my instagram as well do message me if there's any formulations you want to see, any workshops you want to see. I'm going to be teaching a lot more, um, bringing these plants to people, doing more workshops and stuff. And also Herbal Reality, amazing place for herbal education. That's not my company. I just work for it and really respect what's going on there. Um, so, yeah, that's a great objective place to learn about all sorts of plants for different conditions or the plants themselves or quality control. And, yeah, stay in touch. Do say hello. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the end. Really appreciate your time. I hope you found it valuable. Please let me know in the comments uh, what was most valuable in this podcast. You know, anything that you want to know more about, you want to contact me or Rebecca about and uh, have a look in the description. Lots of resources in there that we mentioned about medicinal plants, everything we covered. So yeah, appreciate your time. Thanks for listening. Subscribe, like, and hit that bell button for future notifications. Thank you.